Fantastic colors, shapes, and properties, stunning scents, plants from fields, meadows, and forests, herbs, and crop plants. They all may be useful for people on condition we gain adequate knowledge about them. Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants. What is hidden in plants? This romantic park and garden complex in Plewiska near Poznań is a place of scientific research. Apart from hundreds of tree species and decorative specimens, one can find seemingly inconspicuous plants which can improve or even help save our health. Many of them can be found in our fields and meadows. They've been used in herbal medicine for a long time. The scientists from the Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants have been searching for new valuable substances. Their source may be plants grown in the garden. Some have been brought from distant countries. Who knows, perhaps some of them will give us medicines allowing effective cure for rare diseases. Will these plants adapt to Polish conditions? Will they retain their valuable substances? Numerous herbal plantations across Poland have been established thanks to scientific research. Collected and prepared plant fragments find their way to laboratories of the Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants. These chamomile flowers undergo preliminary processing in order to extract a precious oil from them. The material content received from other plants is analyzed with the use of ultra-modern equipment. Chromatographs, spectrophotometers, and a range of other sophisticated equipment allow for a quick and reliable testing of herbal samples, medicinal products, and dietary supplements. The modern equipment is shortly to be moved to a new facility representative of the 21st century. The Institute will get a fresh lease of life. Containers with fresh mulberry leaves and voracious caterpillars. Their appetite and good health are prerequisite for success. Large cocoons with lengthy fibers. This is how the production of silk begins. The Chinese mastered this method many centuries ago. For a number of decades already, the Institute has been conducting work on obtaining the best variety of silkworms. Good quality silk has a high price on world markets, so it's worth feeding the ravenous caterpillars well. Natural fibers have been used for clothing and in households for centuries. Yarn for a special type of production is prepared in experimental conditions at the Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants in Poznań. We can follow the process on a laboratory table. Many tons of this material are processed at an industrial plant. Will the threads properly absorb moisture? Will they be resistant enough to breaking? These properties depend on the yarn structure and its twist. It is also important from what kind of fibers the yarn was produced. Tiny fragments of thread or yarn are coated with a thin layer of genuine gold in a vacuum. These samples are prepared for a test under a scanning microscope. A beam of electrons will analyze the surface of the threads and provide answers to many questions concerning industrial application of the yarn. Are the obtained threads strong enough? This factor determines their use in the manufacturing of innovative products. Fabric made of flax yarn used to reinforce laminate has successfully replaced fiberglass in the production of ecological containers and casing elements of mechanical devices. Natural fibers have lower density than fiberglass. This means that a product made of a composite reinforced, for example, flax, is lighter. This is a significant property. Thanks to this, new materials are created at the Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants. They come into the focus of interest of the automotive and aviation industries. Among others, the Institute cooperates with the Airbus Consortium, which uses these new materials in the construction and equipping of its biggest passenger aircraft. For natural fibers to become a component of composites, they must first undergo special modification. 
A fine grind of natural fibers mixed with polymers can yield material for elements of household furnishings, as well as structural elements, for example, casings for electric appliances. Can elegant clothing help protect our health? Seldom do we realize that numerous microorganisms thrive on our skin. What microorganisms? To find out, we press a small plate with culture medium against skin surface. Such a trial is carried out twice in every case, prior to putting on the tested garment and then after the clothing had been worn for a precisely specified time. The results are obtained after several days of microorganism growth. It's hair-raising to find out that our skin falls prey to unfavored yeast and even Staphylococcus aureus. Is clothing developed by the scientists capable of affecting positively the natural skin flora? Scientists from the Institute have developed new fabrics, and they have placed nanoparticles of natural antibacterial substances in the fiber weave. Other substances help protect us from harmful ultraviolet radiation. Microcapsules containing natural herbal extracts are also used in making garments meant to support medical treatment. We may view such macrocapsules in large magnification, and they are the crowning of long years of research on herbal plants and cooperation with other scientific centers. This time, a textile strip with pro-health properties is placed around an arm. The armbands will be worn by volunteers for 24 hours. Then they will be taken off. Bacteria samples from the skin are taken before and after the armbands are worn. Will these fabrics improve the condition of our skin? Blue-colored fields of flax have for centuries been symbolic of lands belonging to the Polish Piast dynasty. Many fine varieties of flax bred and tested by the Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants have been grown in the Wielkopolska region for a long time. The experimental farm in Pętkowo has been working to help farmers achieve optimal yields. Studies on improvement of methods of growing flax, hemp, and medicinal plants comprise non-chemical plant protection, agricultural counseling, as well as breeding varieties of improved resistance. We also conduct work on utilizing plant biomass in energy production and on technologies for producing second-generation bioethanol. Research on the cultivation of fiber flax and linseed is carried out in the Institute's Vegetation Hall. The application of biostimulators for increasing drought resistance is tested in cultivation of fiber flax. The effectiveness of new biopreparations and essential oils in protecting flax against plant diseases is studied as well. How to obtain top quality fuel from agricultural waste? We have plenty of material at our disposal, among others, flax and hemp shives. Studies conducted for years have allowed for development of a modern technology of producing fuels and fuel additives from plant biomass. These may seriously reduce the impact of road traffic on the environment. New trends, new models. Clothes made of natural fibers have been available at the Institute's shop for years now. Fashion-conscious ladies from all over the country have been buying here in the most trendy and eco-friendly outfits, so much appreciated, especially in summer. Contrary to common opinion, linen and other natural fibers do not have to be white or gray. They can be magically colorful. Nature itself provides fantastic color dye stuffs. Popular marigolds will yield a yellow dye. Another shade of this color may be obtained from the small flowers of dyer's broom. Natural, non-allergenic dyes are also created at the Institute, virtually an entire palette of rainbow colors. Additionally, each dye is laboratory tested with the use of analytical methods, also to determine the repeatability of the derived colors. The obtained natural dyes are used for painting fabrics. Hand-painted scarves and shawls have a long tradition at the Institute. Their extraordinary designs are admired by elegant women throughout the country, 
each is a true feast for the eyes. There's a whole range of foodstuffs as well as cosmetics containing linseed and hemp oil and extracts to be found at the shop of the Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants. They are all the effect of research on processing technologies of natural materials. These products are characterized by high quality resulting from the eight-year tradition of the INF and MP. This is how the products that guarantee our health are made. Linseed oil used in the Budwig diet, as well as other available products, are placed under strict laboratory control. Bowflax linseed oil, which is the most abundant plant source of omega-3 acids, is the basis for several products. Patients are advised to use it in pure form. Crowned and defatted flax, first produced and launched by the Institute, is a source of non-soluble dietary fiber that, together with the mucus, protects our digestive system. This is a true curse of the area around Konin. Barely a few years ago, a lignite mine was operational here. Gigantic machines extracted hundreds of thousands of tons of coal. This fuel made its way to the nearby Konin power plant, an important element of the national power grid. When coal deposits ran empty, the excavation pits were covered with millions of tons of so-called overburden. A lunar landscape emerged. Mounds of clay and sand became covered with weeds sprouting scarcely. The slightest gust raises clouds of dust. Works on reviving the wasteland commenced in spring 2014. Large hectares were plowed over in rough conditions and then hemp was sown. The hemp grew high within a few months. Its stems remain on the ground after the plants get mowed and the entire area will be plowed over and shall await winter. After six years of cultivation, the first layer of soil will form. The hemp plants will be a good source of material in the production of protective mats for agriculture. We love wooden relics. We like wooden houses that provide a specific climate and which, as some say, have their own spirit. Can we impregnate wood to make it fireproof? For years, the Institute has been conducting research of substances capable of protecting wood and textiles from fire. A solution for protecting wooden structures has already been developed. It is a unique varnish by world standards. It swells when exposed to flame, thereby protecting the wood. This new type of varnish can be applied to wood employing any method. How does it work in practice? After the coat is applied and the layer dries out, the samples are taken to the flammability laboratory. At first, samples of unprotected wood are subjected to strong heat and a gas flame in a combustion chamber under repeatable conditions. The sample starts to burn with a bright, intense flame in less than a minute. It undergoes destruction. In case of a historical building, such partially burned elements should be replaced. Now let's take a similar sample, but with the wood coated with a fire-retardant varnish. Shortly, something new starts appearing on the surface. It is a kind of thick foam which protects the wood from the effect of heat. Despite numerous minutes of exposure to fire, this thick spongy layer of char shields the wood from the flames and blocks the axis of oxygen, thus preventing ignition. It also turned out that the charred foam can be easily removed. The cleaned wood looks almost like new. The intumescent varnish with nanomaterial has passed the test. And there is a panel board which is not only flame resistant but additionally serves as a heat barrier. Despite the exposure to flame, the temperature on the other side has risen barely by a few centigrade. The panel board is an example of a fire barrier composite developed at the Institute for Application in Filling Fire Doors. It resists temperatures up to 1200 degrees Celsius. Nowadays, most often only tiny material samples are needed. A state-of-the-art microcalorimeter is used to determine the material's combustion. 
The readings are extremely precise while the costs, as well as environmental pollution, remain low. It is common knowledge that textile products are also easily flammable. This is a sample of traditional upholstery fabric. It's evident that the flame spreads and destroys the material within a few seconds. Fortunately, new materials and technologies allow for preventing fires. Let us now test a fire retardant fabric. Given the same conditions and despite passing seconds, the material effectively resists the flames. The sample gets covered with soot and becomes charred. Still, it doesn't sustain combustion and will not contribute to spreading fire. Such safe nanomaterials created by scientists from the Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants have already found their way to shops and construction warehouses. The scientists work on new nanomaterials which will be equally or even more effective and convenient in use. For centuries, people have been using plants in medicinal treatment. Also today, they remain in the focus of attention perceived as a chance in combating diseases, especially the chronic and those considered incurable. Thanks to combining genetic engineering methods and in vitro breeding techniques supplied at the Department of Biotechnology, it has become possible to obtain modified plants for biomedical purposes. It is here, under the watchful eye of a highly qualified staff and in line with relevant procedures, that the plants grow in special chambers under optimal conditions. Properly developing plants are a source of material for the production of new medicines. Plants, both the beautiful and less attractive ones, constitute our wealth. They are widely accessible and mostly not expensive. They can be an attractive offer for farmers. The ways of discovering that wealth are sought for by the researchers and laboratories of the Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants in Poznania.